I'm a firm believer in the Galaxy S2 is not only the best smartphone we've ever launched, but it is the best smartphone in the marketplace today. So we're very excited to launch here in North America. Again, the iconic design, the innovative work and life features, and the speed and power that this phone brings. And we'll go through it in more detail as the night goes on. A truly best in class, and this phone is the phone that all phones will be measured against in the future. So we're very excited to bring it to here in North America. And globally, the phone has done tremendously well. Five million units sold in the first 85 days. So ladies and gentlemen, the Samsung Galaxy S2. Galaxy S1 really put us on the map in the smartphone market, and now uh, we're taking it to the next level with the Galaxy S2. First of all, on the hardware side, we have Super M OLED Plus, the most colorful contrast display industry in the market. The Samsung Exynos C210 application processor is easily the best dual core processor in a smartphone today. All of the Galaxy S2 will be 4G, with even larger batteries than last year, and they'll all record 1080p HD high profile. On the software side, we're running the latest gingerbread version with Samsung's own TouchWiz user interface. And TouchWiz has been totally redesigned to be smoother, faster, optimized to work perfectly with the processor without stuttering. It's clean, beautiful, and provides a really exceptional user interface. First, Super AMOLED Plus. Strategy Analytics says Super AMOLED Plus is easily the best display in the industry, but for consumers, what it's about is holding something lifelike in your hand. When you take pictures, when you watch videos on Media Hub, the contrast and the color of Super AMOLED Plus really let you know that you have a smartphone that's different than every other on the market. And not all dual cores are created equal. There are other smartphones with dual core, but not all of them have the Exynos C210. Not only does the C210 best last year's best processor three to one in Quadrant benchmark scores, but it records 1080p HD video at the highest megabits per second of any smartphone we've tested. And what that means is when you capture your 1080p HD video and play it back on a HD TV, nothing is gonna look better. And you would think with that much power, the Galaxy S2 would be thick and heavy, but Samsung doesn't accept that. This is the thinnest 4G smartphone for each of the carrier networks that it's launching on. And this phone, with it, despite the huge screen, will pass anyone's pocket test. I do encourage you to try that trick at home. Eight megapixel autofocus, backs out illuminated camera with LED flash. The user interface, including blink detection and all the Samsung camera enhancements, mean that this will be the best mobile phone camera pictures you take. But we didn't stop there, because if you're using great hardware, you need to share it with other people. So in addition to the HD output support, we've included a photo editor and a very easy video editor, so you can edit those 1080p HD videos, put in still photographs, or even put your own favorite music as a backing track, and export those to share on social networking sites, YouTube, or up to an HD television. And video chat is set to explode. The Galaxy S2, thanks to its huge global volume, supports a wide range of services, from Tango to Skype to, any, to probably any service that you'd like to use, Quick, etc. But Google Talk really brings the ecosystem together. Not only does the Galaxy S2 support Google Talk video chat with its two megapixel front-facing camera, but you can chat to any Honeycomb Android tablet, such as the Galaxy Tab 10.1, or Chromebook, Samsung Chromebook, or any PC or computer logged into uh, Gmail. So that means that it's gonna be one of the largest video chat communities, and with native presence, you know who's ready to IM, voice chat, or video chat at a moment's notice. And we couldn't get away unless we had a thinner design but a bigger battery. So every Galaxy S2 has at least a 10% bigger battery compared to last year's device. Make, and you'll be able to make it through a day, no problem. 
So I could stop here and tell you that with a lot of confidence that Galaxy S2 is easily the best smartphone ever and certainly the best smartphone from Samsung, but that would be premature. I'm going to bring out Gavin Kim, the VP of, of Consumer and Enterprise Services, to walk you through the services and the user interface of the Galaxy S2. This essentially sums up, at a very high level, the broad capabilities that we've delivered, not only on this platform, but actually builds on the successes of our Galaxy Tab family, now moving into Galaxy S2. First thing we'll cover is Exchange Active Sync. We have extremely broad capabilities for policy and security management by Exchange. More than that, we've also spent a lot of time on improving the usability of both the email, calendar, and contacts application on this device. We've also spent some time, actually, quite frankly, making sure that this device is absolutely secure. We've built into the platform an ability to actually encrypt data. We're using a hardware-based chipset on the device that allows us to take uh, uh, enterprise data and encrypt it on the device. We are, uh, we are not relying specifically on software. We're actually using now a hardware-based capability, which means it delivers superior performance for both encrypting the local database storage that exists on the device as well as removable memory. Second, or thirdly, is also our VPN support. We actually now support, and we are the first Android platform to broadly support SSL VPN support from AnyConnect as well as F5. Now, all of these features are nice, but it doesn't work well unless IT can actually administer and manage it. And that's exactly what Sybase Safari is doing for us. We partner with them broadly on our platform. It allows us to take all of those capabilities and allow IT management to actually control your devices and bring them to work. Now, we've covered enterprise at a high level. Um, we've now really focused on trying to make sure these devices can be brought into the workplace that you can experience in them. But we also want to make sure to take care of the consumer experience aspect of it. So we're going to touch very briefly on some of the things that we've done. From the consumer side, we have uh, also continued the tradition of building uh, really great premium content experiences. We've done this with the tab, obviously, and you know, we're carrying this forward with our Galaxy S devices as well. So Media Hub will be uh, offered as a premium content platform on this device. Some of the hallmarks that we've always touted with the, this popular service are obviously one, you can manage your content across multiple devices. So anything that supports the Media Hub capability is, uh, is your avenue to actually manage premium content through the platform. You can acquire content on any device. Uh, third, you can store rights in the cloud. Now this is actually the first uh, uh, commercial release as an OEM to deliver this kind of capability. What this means for you as a consumer is you have the ability to buy content one time and then consume it again on another device without having to pay it again. And the fourth thing is you can access that content anywhere. We have a number of brands that are supporting the service and we have many more that we'll continue to announce over time. The, um, the exciting announcement that we have as part of Media Hub is that we've launched also a capability that we call Media Hub Show. Uh, Media Hub Show is uh, enabling HDMI output from the Galaxy S2 device to be able to play that back on a, a bigger screen. And I'm actually going to show exactly what this means. But effectively, this is taking an HDMI cable, plugging it into your device, walking up to an HDMI HDCP capable TV, I know that's a lot of words, but effectively means that we're actually able to protect that content through that HDMI cable and be able to display that back and share that on a, on a Samsung TV or any other uh, monitor that is HDCP capable. And we'll show this a little bit later. Um, not only have we invested in the ability to build, deliver really great premium experiences on the device, but we've also spent some time making sure that the experience can be also, uh, uh, that you can also experience this device by setting the phone down. So actually, one of the things that we've integrated in the experience is also a, uh, a very robust, very, very capable, very mature voice control engine. Actually, this is done in partnership with uh, our friends at Feelingo. Um, the, uh, the capability here is really for me to be able to drop my phone on, on a desk, or stick it into a car dock, and I simply need to make the make a reference to the phone by saying, hey Galaxy, the device will wake up and I can command it to do other things. I can command it to send a message, I can command it to play audio, I can command it to uh, navigate to a specific destination, I can command it to dial, or I can um, ask it to uh, send a text message. So it is very robust functionality, we're actually quite happy with the implementation. I encourage you to also play with this later on. Uh, next, and, and finally, is uh, Keys Air. Again, this is also another experience that we launched with our Galaxy Tab devices, but uh, this is really the ability over a Wi-Fi connection to be able to control, manage, and edit content that exists on your device. 
through a PC or a Mac on any web browser. So what I'm showing here is the new TouchWiz interface. So immediately, if you compare it to what we did initially with the Galaxy S, you will see at first, at first blush that it's a much cleaner interface. In fact, you'll notice that we've removed a lot of the kind of the traditional chiclets that exist behind some of these icons. So in general, the overall impression of the UI is much clearer. Uh, secondly, we maintain the same consistent um, fundamentals of TouchWiz. So, and that is, there is a, um, a, a widget idle screen. So you see here, I'm actually kind of flipping back and forth with the widget idle screen. That's my daughter. And then I've got the app drawer tray, right? So, and this is again, paginated app drawer trays. This is what's kind of traditional. Uh, what we've done now is oftentimes by carrying this number of widget idle screens, sometimes navigation can be a little bit of a challenge. If every single time I want to get to the first screen, I've got to swipe. So these radio buttons, or these buttons here at the bottom, allow me to simply, I can click the last button, and what it does is immediately is it shifts me all, over, all the way over to the final and last uh, uh, home screen. Or I can actually slide my finger across, and what you see it does is very smoothly, it allows me to very rapidly change and shift to different views. The same thing can also be done for my app drawer. So same, same exact functionality. One of the things we've also done is we've also improved the ability to manage uh, and um, um, uh, customize the application experience that's on this device. So one of the things that I have, in, my, in particular for my phone, I've, I've got a lot of applications on here. So um, you know, maybe one of the things I might choose to do is you know, I'm just going to create a folder and you see here, it's allowing me to create a folder. I'm going to create a folder called Games. And within that folder, I may choose to drop uh, NASCAR, Nova, and uh, just for kicks, I'm going to drop the photo editor in here. So now I've nested it into a folder that I've customized and created. What that allows me to do now is, from the app drawer itself, I can call that folder. I have all of it nested and controlled within that particular grouping. I also have the ability to then drop that group directly onto a home screen, just by, just by holding. Same experience here, I can click into it and it shows me the exact file, or the folder. So navigation has been much improved, uh, and as well as app management. One of the other things that you'll notice, and this is also consistent with what we did, the Galaxy Tab family products, and now on the Galaxy S, is that we the Galaxy S2, is that we've also uh, included what we call live panel. Uh, live panel for us is really about making sure that the experience we're delivering to consumers is just that one click away. So to give you an example here, um, I've got a, a weather widget. This is um, this is uh, um, here in New York. It's it's sunny. I suppose if this were a couple days ago or a few days ago, this might be you know, a completely different picture. But anyway, and you'll see one click away, it pulls up the application. I can see uh, my, my forecast, I get a lot more information directly by, again, just a simple one click. Um, we have the ability to also um, be able to do what we call uh, just widget resizing. So I have the ability to, with Live Panel and the widget that support this feature, I can expand the content uh, size of the widget, which gives me more information. Again, everything's still being one click away. Many of you actually may be familiar with Social Hub that we released on the Galaxy S. Um, it, it was um, the, the kind of the commercial market experience was really a widget. It was a feeds and updates widget. What we've done with the Galaxy S2 is we moved everything into a native application experience, which allows us to deliver much, much more functionality. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to find the Social Hub app, and it's going to it's going to launch here. Inside this, it, I, I've actually already gone ahead and registered a number of different social networks. These are the ones that I kind of use. So Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn as an example. Uh, I might choose to open up LinkedIn, and what it's going to do is going to pull uh, an aggregate view of everything that's going on within my LinkedIn network. Uh, same thing, say, with Twitter, or same thing, or say, with uh, Facebook. Now, um, what we also have is the opportunity to, or the ability to also look at all feeds. So now I'm actually aggregating all the feeds and all the information directly into one specific view. If I come down here, depending on the network provider, for example, LinkedIn, I can choose to, with that particular uh, content provider, I can choose to directly from here <coughs> comment or add a comment. Uh, with a, a Facebook um, a content provider, as an example, here I have much more much more capability that's being delivered with Facebook. I can add a comment, I can directly comment back, I can choose to like this particular post, or I can even send a message directly back. Again, everything is intended to be all all consolidated into a single inbox. And the same thing also with my messages. 
Um, one thing that is kind of interesting is we have spent a lot of time on improving, as I mentioned before, improving the user experience. One of the kind of interesting kind of cool things that I personally like is a conversational view. So, for example, I can go ahead and click uh, Galaxy S2 is so thin, and you know, you'll see uh, you know, a number of kind of my exchange of conversation with this person named Sammy Samsung as an example. Um, the last thing I'll, I'll show is, and, is uh, Media Hub. And uh, again, this experience is something that we've already launched. We've, we've been in market now for about the last year. Uh, we have also made it available as part of our Galaxy Tab launch, and now we're going to do it again here with our Galaxy S2. But I'm going to show what HDMI out or Media Hub show will look like. One thing, to, one thing that's important to note. Not humiliated him, but you did, and you need to. A little loud here. One thing that's important to note is this content is already encoded at the 480i. That's effectively DVD quality, and this is one of my favorite TV shows. If you haven't seen Suits, I definitely recommend you do that. Um, anyway, so you get the idea. I think the kind of cool, important part about it is I always have the content with me. I can walk into a friend's house. I can walk into uh, my family's house. I can watch with my kids. I can immediately just plug in an HDMI cable. I'm ready to go to work. Where do you think you'll be as percentage of the market with this? Oh, that's difficult to say. We're hoping that we'll take 100%. <laughs> uh, you know, we're really excited by the platform. We've done a lot with it. Um, I mean, Galaxy S2 is really coming, uh, at least this particular launch is the U.S. version, uh, the U.S. launch. Uh, we have launched it globally, so we're following it by a couple months. Uh, but we've seen a tremendous uh, just interest from consumers. Uh, it's being snapped up in terms of just volume. It is our best Android device that we've ever created, and we're very happy to be part of this. We're excited about 4G? Uh, absolutely. Uh, carriers are behind it. Consumers are behind it. We are absolutely behind it. That's great. Yeah. And um, using as a Wi-Fi hotspot, how is it? Uh, you can, yeah. Actually, again, it's very contingent on uh, you know having the appropriate data plans and everything with the carriers. Uh, but uh, but absolutely.